Thank you for joining again and watching another Crazy Killer Machine video. My name's Carl, and this is episode number two of Random Access Archives. Um, so after, hopefully, the relative success of the first the first pilot episode with Callum, um, things went relatively well, and I was really happy with with um, with the content. So I think we'll be we'll be happy to carry on with these on a weekly basis. And I'm really happy to say that uh, that joining me for for episode two is uh, is Z from the US. So Z, you say. Hello to people and give us a, uh, a bit of a rundown of who you are, where you're from, and a bit of your Keyforge stuff. All right. Hey, I'm Big Z. I play over here in the U.S. I've gone to a bunch of vaults. Uh, currently, I'm in Texas as far as the U.S. goes. It's a bunch of states. Um, I'm currently ranked number one on the vault <laughs> leaderboard that doesn't ever seem like it's going to change. Uh, so I'm the longest person at number one ever. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure when when do you want me to talk about the deck because that's kind of like how I got into Keyforge as well. Yeah, sure. So you've actually got you've got a a really nice story about this deck. So what we're doing with these decks, just as a recap for for people that might not have seen the first episode, is we're not necessarily asking people to bring their best deck. Um, what we're doing is we're asking people to bring a deck that they like, that has a an interesting uh, an inter interesting interaction, has a story behind it, whatever it might be, and we're going to have a bit of a, a dive into that deck. And then after we've had a bit of a uh, a bit of a, a conflab about the deck itself, we're going to go into my ac my archives or the 256 decks that I've got on decks of Keyforge currently, and just pick one at random, and then play it against uh, against the deck that in in this case Z's bought. So I could. Pull a good deck, pull a bad deck. Um, makes no difference from our perspective. We're just gonna we're gonna see that's how. That's the random uh, part. That's the random part for sure. So we're just gonna see how your deck fares <laughs> against something that I pull at random. So so yeah, let's get into the deck. So you've bought the or you bought right of Artia, Artia, mm -hmm. Artia, Artia. Tell us about right of Artia. So this deck is probably the deck that I have the most uh, history with, and the reason that I got into Keyforge at the level that I got, most likely. Uh, so we all bought Keyforge as a family uh, the Christmas right after it came out, which was, uh, I don't even know now. Either way, like it, it came out in November and yeah. we bought it. Huh? Was it 2018? Was it 2019, sorry, 19. Yeah, 19. So we bought it right after, um, that, that was a Christmas gift. A bunch of families got it and we all played. We played with whatever came in there. It had a couple decks or whatever. Um, and then we all we were all enjoying it and then we bought a... Um, group of us there's like seven of us bought a brick um and we'd each gotten uh, a deck out of that um a deck or two and since my family had three people playing we each got we only got three for us and so each of us picked a deck out of that box and um, you, and and you this got this okay <laughs> and, okay and this was the deck that i got out of that box this was literally the second um uh keyforge deck that i ever cracked out of a pack <clears throat> and we were playing, and you know, we played a lot of like in-house tournaments, and I was just wrecking people because this deck. <laughs> I mean, it's got a lot of the stuff that I still love today. It's got uh, it's got a few missing cards for it to be like uber competitive because it doesn't have some answers for some stuff you kind of need answers for. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the deck goes, uh, so after we like we won all of our you know our local because there's the like, eight of us that still played. We had we would set up our own little tournaments, play internally, and then we started like search around. Like, hey, there's stores that play this game, so we went to some stores and I won like three or four tournaments back to back. And I was like, hey, this game's really fun. This deck's <laughs> really good. Yeah, there's nothing that gets you more invested in the game than winning a few games in a row, for sure. For sure, for sure. <laughs> um, even even my son like uh, was coming in second and won one with a different deck when I wasn't using this. Mm -hmm. Um, it is like you, there's no way to tell now. But before the Vault Tours and everyone that registered for Vault Tour automatically made Power Level 3, which we did not know was going to happen, uh, this was the 13th deck in the entire world to earn Power Level 3 um, via Chain. Nice. Okay. So that was kind of cool. Um, it was like a race internally at the store. There was a, um, a friend of mine named Aziz. He was playing uh, one of his decks, and we were trying to get both of our decks to get the most Chains. He beat me by one event. Um, because one of the events that I went to didn't ever give me chains. So that was a thing back then. Mm -hmm. Had one of my events actually given me chains, I would have beat him to uh, power level three. But the chains didn't ever show up. No, so cool. he had the ninth that reached power level three, and then I ended up being 13. 
No, that's cool, man. So, so yeah, almost <laughs> and then that's a race on the keyboard. Just a race to hamstring yourself with a decent deck for sure, man. Yeah. But yeah. So we we played in a bunch of local events. Uh, from there, we went to the Seattle Vault Tour. I took my son. It was spring break. Uh, that's where I met Nathan and all of the original Team SAS members. We started a team shortly after that. I'd actually met Nathan online prior to that. Um, and a lot of people kind of know the rest. Like, we just went to a bunch of vault tours. Team SAS has won a bunch. I personally have gone 6 0 and sealed on day one many times, but I've never won one. I wondered if I you were going to drop that nugget. Yeah, this. <laughs> I've never won one. Um, I've gotten second. <laughs> uh, third and fifth because I was 6-0, so I would have been top seed in the top four, top eight bracket buckets. Yeah, sure. But anyway, um, hopefully Vault's come back so I can actually continue to have a chance to win one. Um, that's fine. I, I, that really doesn't mean that much to me. I just love playing the game. Um, it's really fun. Like I, like I, It's one of those things that once you have played a bunch of other books, I'm a bo- I was a board gamer before Keyforge, yeah, sure. um, played some card games before that but there's a lot of stuff in other card games that i hate like i hate having to have like whatever lands i hate having to have energy like the the cards that just have to be there that are just pure deck fluff yeah sure yeah, of course doesn't have that like it's much better design in my opinion well i think this is, this is where we this play. is where we cross over a lot isn't it because we no, neither of us to a, a got huge tcg lcg ccg backgrounds you know we don't we don't play Magic Yu-Gi-Oh or anything like that, and we've sort of fallen into Keyforge from a uh, from a board game point of view. So, I, and I, I'm exactly yeah, the same. Sure. I, I like this game because you can play a card as you as you get it. You're not you're not hamstrung by having energy or lands or whatever it might be or mana, and you just you just play the game. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the deck you bought. So we talk about we talk about Right of Artire, and I mean we could see all. It is a strong deck. It's a strong deck, um, which which is obviously done very well with. Um, but it's got all the uh, all the fan favorites with too much to protect and wild worm holes and arises and shoulders and terrors. So, I mean, um, talk to me about the deck. And remember, itself. I got this pre nerf, so it did have library access and bait and switch. Oh, dis- so- oh okay, okay. Well, so- uh, I've missed the library access. Oh yeah, I was too busy looking at the library bubble and the library access. Wow. Okay. So this is OG so- broken deck. <laughs> It could never loop. I never got it to loop back then. Um, I guess if you like were lucky and it's in your deck going into your LA turn, I, I don't I know I've hit LA where I got it to where I was drawing two before, but I had never looped with the deck. Sure. Um but the bait and switch, man. Whew, that used to be a thing. Yeah, for the deck like, what key I and then I'm just... about the deck is it archives out of all the houses. So it's easy to put that bait, pocket it away, and then when you know you just forged your key. You have that huge amber swing that, like, this is the type of deck that is a reason bait and switch got nerfed. Yeah. I don't think bait and switch ever should have been nerfed. Oh, um, no, I get, get the out. LA thing. The get LA one deck. This is where our similarities end. I'm glad bait and switch got nerfed. Yeah, well, I get it. I, I totally get it. I get why people definitely like it. not now. Like tribute is more devastating than bait and switch most of the time. Right? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So. So let's so, well, co- yeah, coat a rush into a bait and switch is just a, you just no way around it. But let's let, yeah, so let's talk about the things I've got to look out for. I mean, three urchins, you're going to do some stealing. Uh, too much to protect is going to do some stuff. Hidden stash, so archiving, like you said, in the three houses. Between that and random access archives, and what else have we got? The archives in Logos. It's just that. Oh, uh, lab work, lab, lab work. Yeah, lab work and sloppy lab work. Uh, you got a board white with gateway to disc. It's just all it's just all the fan favorites, isn't it? It's just all the OG Cota. Mm-hmm. Um, nonsense that I've got to deal with. Is there any particular interaction that I'm that I'm missing, or something, that, or is it just a a deck with all the tools that that it's, does? It's mainly just the gateway arise there, like the old thing, the LA just to set up big for the future. It doesn't actually do anything. Yeah. Um, and then just all the steel in the shadows. Yeah, it's the tools. It's just the tools that are going to put me to uh And my favorite thing is that it's, it can archive in all the houses. It's got the double hidden stash, the library of the damned, got the two. Uh, Direct archivers and logos, and that's fun. I mean, the one thing I, the one thing I've just noticed is the uh, is the F the F at twenty four is um, yes disgusting. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why F even exists on DOK. Yeah, yeah. Um, like pro- when, when I was originally playing this, I just beat Nathan in an event. Um, and I, we started going back and forth because at the time there was another site I can't remember the name of the other site. But when I did my de- like, I had my own score, 
that used some of Nathan's numbers from DOK, mm -hmm. and then it used an efficiency rating, or it was actually called something else, over at the other site, and that made uh, my score. And I was like, you got to add this. And like, I kind of started showing him Dex Y, and um, this is one of the reasons why oh, that's speed really interesting. is even a thing on DOK because of the conversations I had with Nathan. Yeah, that's really interesting. I want to have a quick look at what, what card gives you a 0.1 disruption rating uh oh okay so it's not negative so point one. Oh, so yeah yeah it's so, uh, negative point one yeah so yeah you got howling pit. Like, oh, oh, howling pit minus howling two. Okay. Pit yeah sure yeah yeah okay i can see that so you're going to give me an extra card a turn i can see that sure yeah. so um that's your deck and again i'm going to have so my decks are anywhere between 42 and 79 so i'm not going to say i've got no chance because if i pull the 79 i've got a couple of nice 79s that might do something with it and Somewhere in the high 70s, but let's tell the truth. Most of my decks are around the 65 to 67 mark. So um, I'm going to move across to my random Wheel of Fortune that you can't see, I don't think. Which is Click to Spin, which I've loaded all 263 decks in now because uh, I took the one out that I played against Callum. So let's spin this sucker and see what I'm going to be playing. And you know full well if it's one of those that I've never even heard of, then it's probably a good start. So we're going with a... Yep, never heard of it. Oh, my days. So, Hypnovial, the phony of body parts. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, it's got an interesting name. Um, what do you think? Scared? Uh, I don't... It's in the name? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, you know about much as, as much of the deck as I do. So, I think at this point, um, we'll cut to TCO. We'll get the deck loaded up. We'll have a quick look to see what's in the deck. And then... Um, it's war. Let's go. <laughs> And we've got the decks loaded up into uh, into TCO. Uh, just have a quick look at the deck before we get into it. So we've got a mass mutation deck, Hypnovile, the phony of body parts. Uh, as you can see, organized play, zero power, zero change, zero win, zero loss, zero total, which is probably... 99.9% .9 of the decks I've got in the uh, in the archive, but Dis Shadows Untamed. I mean, I can't can't be upset with Dis Shadows Untamed. Um, looking straight to the Untamed, which is a, a relatively decent Untamed with a Savage class, a Resurgence with a Dark Harbinger or a Dark Harbinger, sorry, um, with plenty of actions. Which, which is not going to be horrendous. Uh, again, just to reiterate at this point, so I haven't looked at it on Dexter Keyforge. We don't know what the SAS is. We don't know what any of the stats are. And we'll look at that after the game. Um, Shadows is, is fine. A bone within, a bit of control. We'll look over there. Nothing nothing spectacular. A Vandalize, what do I want to be hitting with that Vandalize too much to protect, maybe? Or that library access, that'd be, that'd be quite nice. Um, and then a Dis with a Pale Star and an Orb of Invidious, which might make things interesting. Obsidian Forge with quite a few creatures, so that could be a thing. Drekker, Gateway to Dis, so again a couple of a couple of board wipes between that and Savage Clash, which which is always a help. And then a couple of anguishes which uh, have I got anything to do damage to my own anguish? Look over there maybe. I don't know, I can't remember the card if it's an enemy creature, but we'll soon find out. Okay, so this it's not I don't I don't think it's uh horrific. I don't think it's right up there, but I think it should be alright. So uh, what's your initial thoughts, Z? Uh, I mean, even though there's a, a difference in what's going on action-wise, like, I don't know. I haven't ever played this deck against MM, so we're going to see. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's go. So we've got the keys drawn. Let me uh, move this. I'm pretty sure there's not much I can do against uh, Obsidian Forge, right? So, like, that's that's obviously a big, big red flag. That's a thing. It's a thing that I could... A thing I could do on my side. I think I need all the help I've got. So we've got the cards. Uh, we've drawn and I've drawn and I'm going first. So let's see what we've got in hand. Uh, they're no good to me. This is a ridiculous card. Uh, okay. with I've got a card with four four pips on it, which is quite nice. Uh, but I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to keep that hand. Cause that's, uh, I definitely do not have any cards with four pips. <laughs> Uh, TCO's playing fun today, so there's a couple of cards not loaded in there. They're just going to take a second or two to load, so I will keep that. And we'll start with... Uh, let's start with Shadows and drop a Rizzo. Make you deal with it. 
Uh, and I can't. All right. Uh, So he drops a hidden stash. Archive, just one card. Are we going to be brave and say that that one card, or call that one card out? Don't tell me what it is, but it's going to be your too much protect or your. It's going to be your library access. I'll call it as your library access. Okay. Uh, so good shadows again. Drop a Gamgee to the right. We'll drop a Xeno Thief to the left, and. I'm gonna steal your stuff. I only got one, but one is better than note. Uh, so he's going into Logos, drops a universe. Oh no! Uh oh, where's that gonna go? So wild wormhole into an experimental therapy. Hmm. Just gonna want to mine. Whatever you do, don't put it on that Xeno Thief. Ah. Okay, so I've got I've now got a reckless Rizzo that belongs to every house but is stunned and exhausted. I cannot see me get in to use that reckless Rizzo anytime soon. Um, so let's go into Untamed. And we'll go with the old Niffle Ape to the, l uh, to the right. Lumalu to the left for balance, apparently. Uh, near to the right, uh, to the left, and we're discarding this resurgence then, I think. When the... What do you say, sorry, man? So many creatures. Oh, yeah. This is a real bad draw. A real <laughs> bad draw. This is what it is. I need this amber before you steal it all off me. Uh, so Nerve Blast, so I'm losing... Uh, what do we lose? The Gamgee's gone. Bait and switch. Two urchins. Okay, so... I get much out of those urchins, but what can I do? Um, they're all no good to me at this point. How many beasts have I got? Alright, looks like I'm going to have to try and get some value out of this Untamed, I think. Reap the Lumalu for three amber. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, that was nearly a mistake. <gasps> TCO, let me cancel. Thank you. I'm going to fight one urchin. Oh no, you ignore elusive Niffle Ape. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Changes everything. I just read there. Oh no, I forgot. Rizzo survived. Let's remove Rizzo's stun, then we'll end the turn. Oh, Niffle Ape. Niffle Ape, the one time that I want you not to do something and you let me down by actually uh, doing, the doing something. I think that's the first time a Niffle Ape's ever done anything. So here we go, here are all the creatures. So Z's dropped a Terror, a Snudge, a Stealer's Souls, and a Toxin. Oh, and I don't think there's much I can do about those guys. What we got? Well, we got to play around that too much to protect. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this. Rizzo's gonna steal you to Amber. Yep. I'm going to go with an Orb of Invidious and a Pale Star. Mm. Uh, let's have a look. Do I care about that? Yeah, all right. Um, I'll archive the Gamgee because it's the only thing in there, and I'm not worried about the Grim Reminder. Yep, so shadows, do some stealing, too much to protect. It was too much to protect in archives. It was. <laughs> should have stuck with that. it. Should have called it, should have stuck with my uh, 
my initial thought. So too much to protect. Urchin kills Rizzo, obviously. I do get to yeah, forge a key. Oh, for sure. Rizzo in every house is um is not pleasant. I have enough stuff to deal with it, so I felt like it was a safe gamble, but it didn't work out. So let's go let's go sh shadows at this point, I think. Yeah, we'll take the archives. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Everything's so big. Well that toxin's gotta go. Toxin. Um, got anything for Newt? Or do two damage to Snudge, Seek Needle, a Gamji to the right, and a Shadow Smith to the left, and hit Snudge again. And that's it, I think. Okay. What you got for me this time, Z? Hello? Yeah, I've got you, man. You there? Yeah, that was a horrible yeah. LA. I did not draw a single logo card. You didn't, just, you didn't draw a single logos card. Ouch. Mm -mm. I lost you then in the voice as well. Played so three cards. You were swearing. None of them were logos. <laughs> you got, I lost you on voice then, so you could have been swearing in the background and I didn't hear anything. Nah, it was just, just a key forge thing. Just a key forge. Just a key forge. So I, can't, I don't want to do that. Or that. This could be a. I can't get any amber out of it. Could be a pain with it, but I can't get any amber out of it. It's got to be an untamed turn, I think. Um, so Lumilu is going to reap again for three and stun herself. Uh, who wants to die? Who do we want to kill? Kill Snudge. If TCO wants to wake up, come on, man. I'm trying to fight with you. There we go. Snudge can go. Mm -hmm. Out with a niffle into the quick so. Dark Harbinger, Mutation of Fury into Dark Harbinger. You've used your too much to protect, so I'll reef again. And I'll keep my pale star. Your turn. So it's not going the way I'd expect. Um, yes. This is about how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> So what are you doing? We're steal those souls to fight Bonithin and purge Bonithin. Terror to reap, or invaders to stun terror. Drops a shula to take me off a check, and then gateways everything. Sucker. And then arises. Mm, and then arises straight back into the uh, nice. Okay. Have I got your way to get you off check in hand? Don't think I have. Which is a pain. Could have done with that. Oh, what took me off in the end? Oh, you dropped the shoulder twice. Oh, Ugh. Okay. Oh, things have changed a little bit. A 
especially as you ain't got a target for my mark of dis out. Sure. Four or five of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go shadows. Uh, this time we will go pale start. So at least I can take one of the suckers out. And it's going to be your snudge. You're having them shoulders back. Hmm. Tempting offer, so make sure it's damage first. Damage on a toxin. Choose a creature to wow. put back in your hand. Uh, Steel Souls. Got to vandalize. You are not allowed to have. Relentless Whispers. that back on top. Let's give you something to fight. That's my turn. We're just playing randomly in line. I was right. Let's see. Is what, sorry? For the viewers, continue. Oh, you broke up a bit again then, man. What did you say? I said if we're randomly playing online, I was right. can see it. But for the viewers, we should continue. <laughs> Well, that's kind of you, man. Thanks. <laughs> You're sticking, sticking with the video. I mean, I just know what's in my drawer. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, what have we got? Okay, so I have got a card that I'm going to call you out on. You referred to this card in our last video as a horrible, horrible card. And I only realized after you said it, and I didn't want to come back to it. But I'm going to drop a double doom on you. You still stand by it. It's still a horrible card. Yeah, it's a horrible card. <laughs> You're outrageous, man. Fear's a good card, and Mind Barb's a good card. So how's double, double doom a bad card? It is the card. either. Oh, let's play a Drekker to the right. Mark a dis into this, because I'm assuming... Well, I don't want to kill the bad drone. And your turn. Hey, I'm playing this. You are playing this. Oh, uh, whiff. Oh, no. Shoulder into the elusive. That's it. One whiff each. Okay. Right. Let's do these in order. Uh, damage is going to be... Or whatever. Uh, capture is going to be there. Choose a creature. Wild spirit. You know, cunning. And a fandangle to put me on check. Loads of discs. Loads of reap and stun. Let's see if we can get rid of that terror. All right, so this is going to be a waste of a turn, but or is it? No, we'll go shadows. Shadows to hit a pit demon, steal one. Seek needle to kill bat drone. Cycle thief to reap. Stun itself. <laughs> 
Your turn. And take one, two houses. That is it. Yep. You said what's the reason? I can take one in two different houses, which means that's it. Oh. Nice. This is what I thought was good. Nice. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know about this deck. I don't know if I've just pulled it in the right order or what, but what's uh, what do you think? I mean, this deck only has steel in one house, basically, mm -hmm. uh, which is the issue that I had once I got to competitive play. Um, early on, it was great, but once, like, one of the, like, having the archive in all three houses is great. Um, but you basically need consistent amber control in all three houses to win competitive play. Yeah, I mean, the, the um, for me, the, the Lumilu did me a few favors. I got a key out of the Lumilu with them. Um... Yeah, and then the early on, like, the my early draw was probably worse than I'm used to seeing because it does have so much archive, so I normally don't get stuck like that. But still, like, I mean, the, the main weakness of the deck did show itself here. Yeah, for sure. So before we go back to Dexter Keyforge and have a look at this deck in more detail, then I've not looked at it yet, not looked at SAS ratings or any scores. But what we're saying, I mean, I'm I've got I've got to rate it relatively highly. I think I think it's got to be what, 71, 72, maybe. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of bad cards in the deck, so I would be surprised. You've got a bunch of creatures that SAS probably hates, um, like the Unoya, the Lumalu, Nithblade, yeah, yeah, the Drekkers. The cup purse. I mean, actually, the cup purse has to have a high, higher. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. It's just damage, right? So yeah, like the sacro thief, the xeno thief. Like Sass hates all that. Yeah, sure. So if I say if I say seventy two, what are you saying? Are you going higher or lower? You're saying lower then. Lower. I, I don't think it hits seventy. You don't think it hits seventy? Mm -mm. Sure. Okay, then we'll um, we'll take a quick cut. Too many too many creatures. Nathan hates creatures. <laughs> Nathan hates creatures. I'm just gonna have that plastered across the uh, the next. Too round. many creatures that don't have play effects. Let, let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Creatures that have play effects are super high. Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll um, we'll uh, we'll cut from TCO. We'll go back to to Dex Keyforge. We'll have a quick look at the deck that I played, who was Hypno Vile the Phony of Body Parts, and then um, yeah, we'll see where we stand. See you in a second. <laughs> So back we are back uh, at uh, Dexter Keyforge, and bewilderingly to me, is he was at, well, I suppose not bewilderingly, of course he's right, he knows this upside down and inside out, but he was, um, yeah, definitely right. I, I put it too high, I had it at 72, and it's uh, 66, Hypno Vile, the phony of body parts. So um, looking at the stats, looking at the scores, is there anything that jumps out at you that we we weren't expecting? I mean, the, the Amber I'd have probably put up quite high, the... Um, the expected amber, which it is at twenty two, because of uh, because of how it played. But what do you think, Z? I mean, that all looks like about in line. Um, I I didn't see as much creature control as what it shows, but I guess I never like you didn't need to play Gateway or Savage Clash, so that's interesting that that those are both in there. So I did have a Savage uh, Savage Clash in hand, but didn't play it at the time you had. Yeah, it was. I think I only pulled Savage Clash on its own, and you when it was when you had five. Um, Five disc creatures out, and I was only knowing whether to play it or not. But yeah. Well, the way you answered it in Shadows is even better. It took it down to a two creature board. Uh, you got Amber because that's your needle, um, and then you were able to dump hands, so that was better. Well, it was the Pale Star, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was the Pale Star that took mm -hmm, everything down to yeah. one with the Seeker Needle for sure. Well, yeah, and that's another thing. The Pale Star in there makes makes your Shadows turn pretty strong. Actually. Oh yeah, with the uh, two look over. Yeah, two look over there. Oh, not yeah, two look <laughs> over there's uh, Seeker Needle. Doing, doing damage for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a little bit lower amber than card than than decks I'd usually like to play with. Just 10, 10 expect uh, ten amber on cards, but I mean, yeah, like... but like there's some more on the, that's just almost just pretty simply got like the two, two look over there. So that's that's amber from hand. And it's just not going to show up there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it's definitely not a deck I'd play. I expected it to be between. I think I said between sixty. Let's say 65 and 67, so so right in the middle with 66. But um, yeah, it's chalk another one up to the random access uh, to, to the archive itself. Well, and I 
I never got to play it because I was gonna say it when I did, but like this deck has the Maxis Archives in it. Mine. Yeah, I did see. Yeah, for sure, I saw that. I, I, why did I see that and not say anything about it? I saw that it was in there. I was like, I'm definitely gonna mention I was that. Waiting until I played it, but I never. It was in my <laughs> my, my last hand. Yeah, well, whatever. Totally forgot about it. But yeah, I think keys to keys to the game were. I think you got you whiffed a little bit on the uh, on the library access, which was which was unlucky. Um, yeah, I mean the the biggest thing was on turn two. I ended up with a big shadow's hand that was all steel. You only had one amber. I had to dump my hand, um, and then on my LA turn, I literally played four cards and drew no logos. Uh, that normally goes very differently. Um, it's just keyforge doing key wild one holding yeah. into the experimental therapy. Like there's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty bad too. Yeah, sure, man. Well, this is it. And well, even then, like the thing I put it on, the deck has like. Pawn Sacrifice, Nerve Blast, Relentless Whispers, Gateway, which I knew I was going to need too soon anyway, and all of that was not coming up. Um, so, yeah, it was rough. Sure was, man. Sure was. So I guarantee the next 99 times out of 100 we play this, you're that deck wrecks this one, but um, no, I'm going to take the win and run away. <laughs> never, I guarantee I never play this deck ever again. It's going straight back into the archives, and um, it's had its moment in the sun. Yeah, I mean, that's the fun thing about Keyforge. Like, I mean, as long as you play consistently, play well, make good choices, you can definitely punch above above your weight class quite often. I mean, there's no there's no deck that is going to beat every deck 100% of the time. For sure. Um, there's, there's, and this is why we, we talk about stats and we have to talk about them in context because stats work over the, course of a, uh, over the course of a season, over the course of 100 games. But in one game, one game, anything can happen, can't it? So... Yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, when we talk about going to vaults, like, some of the best decks in the world have a 90% win rate, but, like, to make it to day two at a competitive open vault, you still got to go 500 or better. You still got to win. And even at a win rate of 90%, it's not that uncommon to drop two games out of six. So, like, it takes all the things. It takes, you know, being in tune with the game, playing as well as you can, and understanding the outs that you have while you're available to them. Because like if you get rattled and if you start missing those outs while while you're sitting there, that ninety percent becomes less than ninety percent, right? So like for sure, I don't know. That's Keyforge. This That's is what Keyforge, it's about. man. It's Keyforge, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, from my point of view, all I want to say is thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for for jumping on the second one. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, obviously, yeah, we're doing last. We're gonna do uh, a lot more together with the with the Premier League anyway. So, um, any final remarks before we sign off? Keep forging keys, playing key forge, uh, reach out to some people in your community, try to get them to play too. For sure, man. Yeah, it's a good message. Uh, so yeah, from me and from Z, thanks for uh, thanks for watching if you've made it to the end. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week with somebody else that's going to dive into the, uh, into the archives. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you again.